Our Brussels correspondent, Christine Mundois, is covering this story and joins us now. Christine, remind us again of how the Northern Ireland customs issue is currently dealt with under the Brexit agreement. I know this is complicated, but try to put it in a nutshell Terry, for us if you can. Th that's right. Terry, the EU has specific food rules, especially when it comes to products like meat uh, and eggs. And the, and the block requires that goods coming in specifically from non-EU countries are subjected to customs checks. Now, because of the political history, which is very sensitive between Ireland and Northern Ireland, Brexit negotiators thought it wise not to impose a hard border uh, between Ireland and Northern Ireland, which is effectively the kind of instrument that you would need to be able to facilitate these very strict checks that the EU requires on its products. So the workaround there was that all goods coming from the rest of Great Britain, that is England, Scotland and Wales, would be checked in Northern Ireland. A special arrangement was made for Northern Ireland, which kept Northern Ireland in the single EU market in the, in the sense that Northern Ireland still keeps to EU standards. So any goods coming in to Northern Ireland from the rest of, of, of Britain are subject to those EU standards. What the British government is now seeking to do is, for example, propose two lanes at that border, one processing goods that are coming in uh, from, from the rest of, of Britain that are destined to stay in Northern Ireland, which the UK government says should only be subject to UK standards, and then another lane for goods that are destined for the rest of the European Union that would be coming uh, from Britain. But this, in simple uh, words, Terry, is, of course, going against what was agreed upon uh, in that Northern Ireland Protocol that came into effect uh, at the end of 2021. If Boris Johnson does unilaterally change the terms of that deal on Northern Ireland, what impact could that have on trade with the EU? Terry, there are people are starting to use the words trade war. Could we see a trade war between between Brussels uh, and London? And by all indication, that that is that is likely. What happens in a trade war? That is, of course, two trade partners start to increase the tariffs and the quotas on goods. That makes imports and exports more expensive. That means some companies go out of business. Uh, there is also an inflationary aspect to that because goods become more expensive. And at a time in Europe, uh, both in the United Kingdom and in Europe, where people are seeing the cost of their living soar because of the energy crisis, among other things, that would be really, really detrimental. Businesses, uh, companies going out of business would also mean uh, that there are potential job losses uh, on both sides. In the long run, trade wars have been known to show that they have a sort of depressive economic uh, impacts. But there's also the political impact to all of this. Right now, Europe is facing uh, its biggest security threat since the end of the, uh, World War II uh, with Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Right now, Western unity and solidarity is needed more than ever. Uh, and this, of course, the straining and souring relations between London and Brussels over, 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 over this issue would, of course, be detrimental to, to that unity and resolve that the mm. West is seeking at this very difficult time. Okay, there could be legal implications here, too, of course. The EU is threatening legal action if the UK breaks the current agreement. Uh, what sort of legal action are we talking about here, Christine? Well, you can expect to see the, the, the UK, um, well, excuse me, the, the European Union uh, argue that uh, the UK is effectively breaching international law. That is because the Northern Ireland Protocol um, was uh, put into international law. And by all accounts, the British government is making the concession that it is contravening, that it is, uh, in a way, undermining its obligations to international law. It argues that the doctrine of necess necessity uh, warrants that. Uh, that is for a court of law to, to determine. But, but the EU um, uh, Vice Commission President Maris Evchovich said this. He said the unilateral action is damaging to, to mutual trust. He said that this will simply bring further legal uncertainty for the people and businesses in Northern Ireland. The EU says it is interested in negotiating some of the concerns on, on, on the UK government's side, uh, but given the momentum of this bill and, and sources in the UK saying that it, it's looking as though the government is likely to get it or uh, get a vote in before the summer recess, it, it takes away the concept of of these two parties perhaps negotiating this and ultimately leading into some kind of legal action on the grounds that the UK is breaking international law. Christine, thank you very much. That was our correspondent, Christine Mundois, in Brussels.